Welcome back to the Remote No Pressure Podcast, the Bill. Well, hello. Good to be back. Good to be back. We got yes. it this time. We Finally. nailed it. Oh. It's we're what episode 22, 23 into season four, and we finally you know, got it. You just had to find our rhythm. That's what just, it comes down to. Just had to find the rhythm. That's what we had to do. But welcome back, everyone, to the Remote No Pressure Podcast. I'm very excited about this week's episode, and I'm going to tell you why in just a little while. But I am very excited about this week's episode. Bill, how was your weekend? How, how have you been, Bill? It's been a little while since we've talked. I mean, you're doing okay. I'm doing good. Yeah, things are well. Can't complain. How about yourself? How was your week? Uh, you know, it... Week slash weekend, I guess. Well, cause. big shout out to accountant Phil. Yeah? He had the baby. Oh, congratulations, Well, Phil. he didn't physically have the baby, but his wife oh, had the baby. Oh, I'm less impressed. Yeah. I watched Twins <laughs> and... Um, Starring Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, you know. and when the little guy. What was yeah, that Danny movie? Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. That was a <laughs> classic, dude. Dude, I haven't even thought about that show in years, man. What brought that up? Oh, well, you were talking about he had the baby, and that instantly made me think of Arnold pregnant. You remember that? What? No, I don't remember the movie. I remember the, the cover I'm of sorry. the movie. Are you thinking it, oh, of... Oh, Twins, and then there's Junior. I was thinking of Junior, and I what called out Junior? Twins. What was Junior? Was it Junior? Or Man. Kindergarten Cop? No, Arnold had a movie where he was, they like, they impregnated him in, what? A, in a lab. Yeah, you don't remember that? I, I swear it it's one Junior. Of those, one of those goofy 80s movies. I'm going to look it up right now. Yeah, so it, what, was, it was 90s. But, uh, it was I, 90s? I think 90s, yeah. Okay, I got to look it up. We have, we have a new studio now, and yeah. we have computers and different things that we can do things with, and it's very exciting. So if you go to our YouTube channel, and you can look at my face, and I'm smiling from ear to ear because I tell you what, you know... <laughs> 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 Welcome to the studio. No, but Bill, in all seriousness, though, in all seriousness, I love you, but I don't like sitting right up next to you all the time. It's oh, just not a lot of room. I took a shower most times. Most of the time. With them, it wasn't the times you did. It's the times that you did. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's see. <laughs> Look at All right, I'm done with that. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Let's see. Junior. This it was the movie Junior. called. Yeah. Oh, Junior. I think. I think it was Junior. You're right, 1994. <laughs> <laughs> it was Danny DeVito in that movie. With yeah. Him. It was. What What other movies did they do together? They did that this one, and they twins. Did twins. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Arnold oh, looks so so He was young. young then. He was. That was before he was the governor. Oh, now he looks rough. Dude. Yeah, he does. He he, he, he let himself old. go. Stopped lifting the weights. Oh my gosh, dude! Yeah, he's looking rough. But hey, I mean, he's probably still in better shape. Than oh yeah, he could probably still take us. <laughs> <He could> still, <laughs> I'm sorry, Arnold. We're just I, kidding. I know Arnold listens to this. To this, uh, he commented uh, a couple episodes back. Yeah, if you guys want to go to our YouTube channel, but you can only see his comment if you subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> it will magically. We appear. should be at 200 by now. Yeah, we, we are over 200 yeah. subscribers to our YouTube channel. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. If you're not on the YouTube channel, be sure to go uh, to our YouTube channel and click down below and subscribe and get announcements. What are they called? Yeah. Notifications? Yeah, ring the bell for notifications. And uh, I don't remember all the YouTube speech that every, every other channel we, we'll give you. We're... We're not like that. We, we'll just sell our merch. Hey, we'll sell our merch. Fly I'm, fishing's dead. Uh, I'm not too proud to sell merch. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I, I'm, no, but go to our website. Go check out remotenopressure.com and buy something. How do, how do you like those shirts? Bill? Man, they're comfortable. You know, I was, I believe it or not, if you guys go on the YouTube channel, you can see me right now. I hired a trainer at the beginning of the year. Hey, how been, you liking it? Been working out a little bit. You know, I'm not not really doing much. I mean, you can't you can't work out and eat cheeseburgers. And that's some, on a regular basis. Yeah, <laughs> I'm blaming I'm blaming my trainer, and I'm re- I'm demanding my money back. I'm just like, dude, look, I, you're making me work out, but I'm not losing any money. And he's like, bro, like you have to like lose weight first, so you have to like eat better, and then you lose weight. He said abs are made in the kitchen, hmm. not I in the gym. Know. I don't know. I said, look, bro, I want all my. No, I'm I'm totally kidding. I'm I'm not I'm not not telling the truth. You're not. What part were you lying about? All of it. Well, I did hire a trainer. I did hire oh. a trainer at that, but the part <laughs> is I haven't lost any weight and it's two months in. Um, so You're that's, gaining muscle though, right? And yeah. that's where you start losing the weight is by gaining the muscle that starts eating the fat. There's a whole science thing, um, global warming. Global warming. I have not lost any weight. I started in January and um, in the first month, I really counted the calories. I was really like, you know, I'm going to do this. 
And then... Uh, so your trainer's pushing calorie counting. That's a big thing with him, calorie counting. So is my doctor. Really? Now, you're not a big calorie counter guy. I mean, you lost, yeah. uh, you lost 100 pounds. I mean, if you want to lose weight, how many carbs a day should you... If you really want to lose weight, like um, let's just say 20 I just, or less. Let's just say I just want to go really slow with yeah, my weight Yeah, if you loss. hit like 40 or 50 carbs a day, that's not a lot still, but I mean, like that's pretty generous in the the keto community. What what is like what is a candy bar? Like let's just say I eat one like a, Snickers like a thousand. bar. No, I'm kidding. I don't like one Snickers bar is how many oh, I I'm not a Snickers without fan. looking at the back of it, but like but like our, our sponsor, that was only like what, twelve or eighteen carbs? Sixteen. Per beer? Yeah. Sixteen. Yeah, that's not bad Hold for on, a I got, beer. I got a can right here. Do you remember uh was it uh, This is this is their um their golden ale or upside dawn athletic brewings and it's mm-hmm. actually really yeah, good. It was, yeah. Well, I mean, it still is. I drank mine already. That's why it was. Yeah, it's got 50 calories and 11 carbs. Yeah, 11 carbs is nothing. You remember Michelob Ultra? Yeah. That was supposed to be like a low-carb beer, and that was like, I want to say 12 or 15 also. What is that? What is a like a normal IPA, like 200? Oh, 200? my gosh. I couldn't tell you. Like Back when I was a ha- drinker and like I wasn't carb counting and I was you know 100 pounds heavier, I w- but I was drinking like four to eight beers a night you know, okay. on the job. And uh, when I was working at the brewery, how did you function with four to eight beers a night? Eight, well, eight hours, you know. Yeah, you can. I'd spread out like um, three to four on the shift, and then I drank the other four after my shift. You just sit at the bar and you just hanging sit, out, hanging out, drinking some beers. Dude, I'm telling you, there's been times when I've gotten on the horn with a with a guest or something, and I've had like a glass of wine, or I've had a beer, like especially like one of the heavier IPAs. And I will, I can tell my, my speech when I'm going yeah. back to edit that I'm, I'm slower. Yep. Yep. I watched people I worked with who would, um, they'd be drinking with me. They'd keep in, be keeping up and I was, I was heavier so I could metabolize it a little bit better uh-huh. and I'd watch their performance go down while keeping up with me, you know? Right. And, or if I went after I got my, my DUI, I couldn't drink and I stayed working there for another month. Mm-hmm. I remember, um, the end of the night, like. They're just all sitting around chit chatting. I'm like, man, I want to get these cables wrapped and get out of here. Uh-huh. The band is gone, and like everybody else disappears. <laughs> like, that's why I'd be there till four in the morning sometimes, man. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. I'm just not, I'm a lightweight bro yeah. when it comes down to it. But but yeah, so I like I, we mansplained pregnancy a little bit last yeah. last um, the last episode. That's right. Um, we talked about Shana, Phil's. Or Sh- well, Shana's Shana is Phil's wife. So I think it's okay to use her name. She's an amazing woman. We can beep it if not. I we mean, can we can beep it, but she's really she's a really sweet human being. I've yeah. known her for a long time. She had a baby, and she said that she she wanted to try the athletic brewing because she's pregnant. And she loves the taste of an IPA. Mm-hmm. Then I ran into uh, I was at a trade show last weekend, uh, and I ran into someone, and and I they have it's another brewery company, and the lady was pregnant, and she said, "Yeah, all I drink is athletic brewing right now because." I'm pregnant and I can't be, and I love beer with pizza and stuff like yep. that. So that's awesome. Yeah. But you know what? Beer lovers know the names. Y'all ready for this one? I'm not talking about your local spaceship fruity IPA. I'm talking about the names in this competitive beer landscape. Two hearted drunken monks, Pliny elders and grapefruit space time machines agree that there's a new name in town. It's the International Beer Challenge Award winner of 2020, Bend Oregon's Craft Beer Award winner of, in 2020, one of the top selling beers in Whole Foods. This unbelievable IPA, drum roll please. I still didn't program that in. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was laughing before I got here because I knew it was going to happen. Drum roll please. Uh, Only 70 <laughs> calories. <laughs> ah, nope. And no, that's not. And it's non alcoholic. I love craft beer, and it's hard not to in Michigan, but I've had to cut back. Nothing takes a harder toll on my body like local craft IPAs. Mm. Although some people claim that the dad bod, and you can see me do the quotes on, on, only on YouTube, uh, on YouTube, Rumble, only when Lady you parlor. subscribe. Uh, you'll s- only see the quotes when you subscribe. <laughs> uh, although some people claim that the dad bod is so hot right now, while well, I just don't believe them. Athletic Brewing's Run Wild IPA is a non-alcoholic, fully brewed, not diluted, non-alcoholic, low-calorie, award-winning IPA. Have this beer or any of their brews shipped directly to your doorstep and save 20% with your discount code BEERMONEY20. 
20, all with one word, beer money 20. Have this beer or any of their brew shipped directly to your doorstep and save 20% with a discount code beer money 20. Beer money 20. Unless you're in Michigan. Then it doesn't work. Sorry, Michigan. Can't. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm sorry. I can't I can't handle the transaction either. I can't do that. What transaction? Like if if they wanted 20% off, they could just email me and say I bought it with their receipt or something, but I can't do that. <laughs> if you're in Michigan, you're just SOL. Sorry, guys. But Whole Foods coming to Grand Rapids. Whole Foods right? is coming to Grand Rapids. Or you know, Harvest Health here in Mich- Grand Rapids. Y- yeah, and this is actually one of the most popular beers in Whole Foods. So go check out Athletic. Are they Brew. in like our gr- local grocery stores yet, like Meyer? I don't know. I know they're in Harvest Health, but uh, mm-hmm. that's where I got this, but I'm not sure if they're in our, our local Meyer yet or Let's not. Check that out. Yeah, it's pretty good, especially like the flavor. Like I like the IPA, yeah. but you know, I don't. It tastes like a real beer. It doesn't taste like the near beer, you know, the like old duels. Yeah. You know what happened to me? And we had this conversation before we got on the air, but, um, you know, I, I deal, I, I was, I broke, you okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you I think? thought I wasn't recording. Oh no. I looked down. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, we're good. It's too much equipment. Too much equipment now. No, but we talked a little bit before we got on the air, and I told I deal with chronic pain. It's something I deal with because of um, I was in a very bad car accident as a child, and I broke my hip. I had a hip replacement, contracted a staph infection, almost died. Had like four different hip replacements in a matter of six months. Whatever, blah blah blah. Well, I walk really funny. I'm not 22 anymore, so I deal with chronic pain. Well, I haven't really had a whole lot of pain, but then I started drinking some local IPAs this past weekend, and it's like it caused inflammation in my body because my, I'm, I'm like right now I'm in a lot of pain, and uh. I haven't felt this way in a while. So that's good that you're self aware though, too. A lot of people just don't know, you know, I'm in pain. But I don't know why I'm just going to pop ibuprofen. Right. So you're finding out why that's a good thing. Right. Or opioids or something yep. like that. I've yep. never been a pain pill fan. I, you know, whatever. Only when I'm on them. Yeah. Even then I, you know, I remember, you know, just sitting there, my dad, I was like, I was like 22, 23 years old. I'm sitting there yeah. in my dad's living room and I haven't been outside in forever. And I've been on these opioids. And he's like, do you want to go like, get a hamburger? Just get out of the house? I was like, no, I'm good. And then I was like, I should really want to go out yeah. outside, you know. But anyways, I digress. Uh, in the meantime, in other news. <laughs> enough of my personal life. Bill, if you could do it, if you could do anything, if you could go back to 1998 and you could oh. pick any career you wanted to do, what would you do? Man, I don't know. Like, I think I'm doing it. I think I'm good. Really? Yeah, I think I'm good. Not a lot of guys that went to to uh, college for sound got into the actual sound business, no, bro. No, no. Um, you met my old roommate back in the day. Yeah, Alvin. He's not doing it anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know. I of the of all like, there's probably like. 20 some 30 some of us in my class i don't know how many are still doing it like one guy in from my class is he owns like a recording studio in town he met roy uh-huh yeah um away from that one's like a manager at guitar center and i don't know about the rest do you ever talk to the guy at guitar center you ever no, i never go to guitar center yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well i you know i i remember just graduating college and i met this guy that um did the grass uh, for the Texas Rangers. And so he was the, the, the grounds, he was part of the grounds crew, but he actually went to college like sod management wow. was an actual major. And that's what he did. He worked for the, the Texas Rangers. I can't remember the guy's name. He hung out. We used to go like skiing and he was like friend of a friend kind of mm-hmm. thing. But, um, this, this week, uh, meet the, the sod father, the sod father, not the godfather. But the sod father, 90, 91 year old NFL groundskeeper preps field for Super Bowl at Raymond James, Tampa, Florida. When the Buccaneers take the field, took the field, I should say, because it's past tense. Past, mm-hmm. Did did you watch? Are you a football fan at all or not? Uh, I you know I like it for the commercials. I can follow it. Uh huh. Just not a sports person. Yeah, well, when the Buccaneers uh, took the field at Super Bowl Sunday, they'll be playing with turf perfectly manicured by a man known as the Sod Father or the Sultan of Sod. 
Hmm. I like the. Do you like the Saad father or Sultan of Saad better? I think the Sultan of Saad's a cool name. Yeah, yeah Sultan of Saad. It's kind of hard to, to say, but <laughs> George Toma, age ninety one, has prepared the field at wow. every single Super Bowl. Quote, it's an honor for me to do this, unquote, Toma told Eight on Your Side. Toma began working with the NFL in the 1960s during Super Bowl I. In the early days, the first 20 Super Bowls, we only had maybe six to 12 days to get the field ready. And he said, now we've got six weeks. Toma spent a large portion of his career serving Thanks, as... COVID. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. See, this is the second time we've had to do an introduction because last time <laughs> I went there. I'm sorry. I went, I went off profusely. See, Bill knows how to trigger me. And so he's trying to trigger me. So I will. Have... No, I was, I was, uh, I was triggered by that. I was self triggered and I, I had to, uh, I got to rein it in. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. My theory, according to Toma, and my theory is the cheapest insurance for an athlete from kindergarten to a professional level is a good, safe playing field. That philosophy has earned him numerous awards throughout his career. You have to give the fans in the stands and the fans on TV a field of beauty, and you have to do that while not taking too much out of the owner's pockets, he said. If you're not doing the job, I'm not afraid to tell you. You know, and this week on the Remote No Pressure podcast, we have uh, Captain Jody Maldares, although he... We're going to call him Mr. Joe D. Maldaris, and you'll find out why once we start the episode. But talk about someone who's passionate. I could see Joe doing this till he's 90, 91, mm-hmm. you know, guiding. He's a guide. But the, one of the reasons that I had him back on is because he was the very first, the very first guest we had on the podcast. So if you go back to season one, episode one, Captain Joe D. Maldaris, King of the Upper Delaware, uh, you can go check out that episode. You can hear a really goofy introduction music because I would just use stock music, <laughs> right? Yep. Uh, and then I would, I would like opine. I don't know where you are right now. Like something like that, you know, <laughs> maybe you're driving down the road. It was fun. I didn't know what I was doing. It's really fun to go back and listen to this. So go back to season one, episode one. It's even on our YouTube channel. Actually, mm-hmm. at the very end of the, at the very end of the show, uh, I'll put up a link to the very first episode there, but, um, you can check out Joe DeMaldaris's initial, um, and, and I didn't know anybody really, you know, I knew Gary Lindquist. We had mm-hmm. him on, I knew a few local people, but I didn't know anybody. So I would literally sit at the table and I would email 10 people every night on LinkedIn until someone agreed to me. And my first guest was Jody Maldaris. My second guest was Bob White. Wow. I mean, heavy hitters. Yeah. And I didn't even know, I didn't even know who they were, you know, I was just Mm -hmm. like, uh, okay. Yeah. (laughs) You know, so also, um, speaking of Bob White, mm-hmm. I got a song on the new album called Raven, Ode to Bob White. So mm-hmm. be sure to go to jefftroutman.org or the, I'm sorry, jefftroutman.us, not jefftroutman.org. I am not a nonprofit or anything. <laughs> well, <it's close>. <laughs> <laughs> but check out the new album from Jeff Troutman and the, and the Parachute Adams Band. Uh, but, but yeah, it's been really cool that over the last couple of years, just developing relationships with people. And it was, it was awesome just to reconnect with Joe. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Be sure to go down below and subscribe. Um, welcome to the podcast. Let's light the fire. Well, welcome back to the Remote No Pressure podcast. I'm ex- very excited to have with me back Mr. Cap- our captain, Joe D. Maldaris. Thanks for hanging out with me, Joe. Hey, you're welcome. You know, you can, let, you can drop the captain part, though. It, I was, you know, I, I, I reserve that respect now for military people. Okay. Okay. Well, it sounds cool anyways. Yeah, it does sound cool. And I mean, it's technically, it's legit, but, um, you know, it, it works good on luggage, you know, it, like <laughs> TSA guys are less likely to mess with it. Figure it's probably yeah. some captain of something. <laughs> you know? This guy looks important, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I had a friend of mine, his name was Donald Reed. And so his stuff had DR on it. So everyone thought he was a doctor and yeah, there the, pl- you go. the plane was going down and, the, and, and, or someone was getting, not going down, but this, someone was hurting on the plane. And they said, I know you're a doctor. I saw it on your luggage. He's like, no, my name's Donald Reed. <laughs> not a doctor at all. Like, trying to avoid, uh, any kind of, you know, lawsuit or anything. Sure. But, Impersonating a physician. Yeah. Yeah. But Joe, I, I, I will be forever 
uh, a, I'll have gratitude with you forever. You were the very first, the very first guest on this podcast uh, back in 2017. And if anyone wants to go on our website or on our YouTube channel, you can go back to season one, episode one. I think I entitled it King of the Upper Delaware, I think is what it was. What? I don't remember what you called it. I just I remember it's fun never having met you or anything. And like you kind of hit me out of the blue. And I just remember I'd just gotten off the river that night. It was kind of late we did it because I had to get back yeah. um, off the river and stuff. And it was well after dark, but it was um, it was very enjoyable. I do remember that. We had a great conversation. And I was excited for you. And and, I'm, and every time I see you come out with a new podcast, um, I, 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 it's exciting. I'm, I'm happy to see that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, and, you know, before we started here, if, if you guys want to go onto our YouTube channel, you can zoom in and see Joe's COVID hair. And Joe, <laughs> you know, I have very little hair left. That's why I'm wearing a hat. I normally wear a hat. So anyone who complains about their hair, I, it just, I, you have nothing to complain about, Joe. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm, I'm not really complaining about it. I'm, I'm happy I have hair. It's just a lot longer for comfort than I'd like it right now. So I'm at the point where I'm going to get it either let it go really long now and Mm -hmm. do something like old hippie style with it or reggae or I'm going to get a cut with it as soon as I can again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I almost didn't, I almost didn't see you tonight. Um, I was going to do it as, you know, connect with you at 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 my fly shop and the big bird internet company we have, the internet went out and so anyway, I zipped home, jumped in a spare room, and here I am. Well, there you go. And you got a nice blanket. Is that a homemade blanket behind you, or is that? Is that is, yeah, that's a blanket my mother made for her grandson, my son, when he was a little itty-bitty-bitty baby. He's 27 now. So Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. Well, Joe, I'd like I, to talk. You can see that. You can see my, my uh, gym, too. There you go. Do you use is, <laughs> Do I use it? Yeah. Do you use it? Yeah, it's great. Like to hang damn clothes on to go dry and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Works <there> as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I wanted to talk. I wanted. I would like to talk about two different things, Joe, on the interview here. And um, number one is I want to talk a little bit about your journey for people who may not know how you went from uh, financial services into the fish fly fishing scene. And then I also would like to talk to you a little bit about 2020 uh, and your fly shop. So can you tell us a little bit about why you, I mean, you, if I remember correctly, you kind of left everything and came home and said, I'm, I'm going to go fishing, right? And you told your wife. Yeah, for, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was something I, I always wanted to do and finally just got um, the guts to do it. Maybe and, and a little bit settled, you know, a little financially able to do it at the time too. But, you know, a few things came together that allowed me to take the risk. Number one, being a, a very supportive wife who just wanted me to do what I wanted to do, you know. And so she was all for, you know, taking the plunge. And and I was still young enough. I was old enough to know better, but young enough that, you know, if it didn't work, it wouldn't have been the end of the world, you know. Mm-hmm. And right now it probably would have been, like a lot more financially better off, <laughs> but that's, that's not you know, what it's about, but um, it, it, you know, so everything just kind of came together. The timing was right and um, just did it. So never, never had any regret once. So that's great. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, that's great. I, you know, the, it's easy to look back and say it could have been this, could have been that, or fi-, you know, like you had mentioned financially, this or that. But it's all a journey. No matter what you're doing, it sure. seems like there's no guarantees in life. No, and, you know, no. And, you know what? If you work, every anything will work. You know, the key is you got to work. You got to do it. You got to be passionate about it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got to be something that's really tugging at you. So my piece of advice my father had given me. Um, <laughs> probably right after college, I guess I got out of college and, um, had one job, took another job and took another job. And I remember my father telling me when I was in, in between decisions to make, he said, just never put yourself in a position to say, what if Mm -hmm. just go do it. You don't want to look back, you know, when you're 50, 60, 70 years old and say, Hey, what if I did that? Just do it. You'll you'll know. (laughs) know? (laughs) 
Sure. So that that was uh, some you know something I've always done. Ever since then. And you make a decision, you stick with it. You're happy doing what you're doing. Um, I mean, the rest of it's small stuff, really. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, you know that. I mean, look what you're doing. So yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of you know um, t- times. You know, it's sacrifice. You have to, like you said. I, I think it's ninety percent. I read a quote saying. 90% of success is just showing up, you know, just being well, there. Well, a big, big part of it is that. And, and big part of it is not being afraid to make a decision. You know, not making a decision is a decision. And right. it's the wrong decision. Otherwise, there's no wrong decision. You know, mm-hmm. just, just do it. Just go. And as long as, you know, the passion is huge. I mean, when, you know, when when I hire people to work for me, they there's one thing. The number one thing I look at isn't talent, isn't skill, it's passion. Mm-hmm. You can teach the rest. You can't teach passion. Either it's either in you or it's not. You yeah. know, so that's the, the number one f- driving force I find in, in just about anything, you know. Uh, whether it's, you know, gathering a whole bunch of parachute mayfly patterns together to play music or, you know, <laughs> whatever <laughs> else it is, you know. So, you know, you wouldn't do that if you weren't passionate about it. Right. Now, I mean, is Anita Colton still working with you as well? Yes. Yep. I Anita's mean, still working with me. You talk about someone who's who's got the passion. I mean, she's won all kinds oh, of great. casting oh, awards. Oh, and- oh, 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 she's terrific. All my people are, though. I mean, I I, I, I truly have to say I, I love every single one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they're terrific people, um, work together really well, you know. There's, you know, there's been a few along the way that are no longer around, you know, thankfully. You know, things happen, but, um, you know, I got 10 people there now, I guess it is. And, and everybody's terrific. Just, just terrific. And, and I'm really picky. I kind of run a different, um, hiring process perhaps than you probably see anywhere else. Maybe, maybe it is other places, but you know, we're small, we work together. Um, it's, it's an intimate work environment and I don't bring someone in now unless everyone is in favor of that person. Oh, wow. So it's, everyone's got to like that person. And no one has to tell me to, why they don't like him. They just oh, that guy's a jerk. Good. <laughs> That's fine. You know, what? I, I don't need your, your reason because I, I just know everyone who's, you know, who's uh, on the team well enough that I know they're just not going to make stuff up. They're not like that. Right. So um, they don't feel, they don't feel threatened by someone else. You know, everybody, Everybody feeds together. We all understand that, you know? Yeah. There's no, you know, I tell these guys all the time, um, we don't have a star quarterback. They all tell me, oh, yeah, you know, you're, no, I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) And we don't have that guy. You know, everyone uh, has their own thing they exceed at very well. And Uh everyone, you know, we all feed off each other, learn from each other. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that seems like, the hardest thing is to get that chemistry right and then to maintain it, you know, cause as a business yeah. owner or whatever, there's tempting, Oh, this is the next hot shot or this, you know, we're always looking for the silver bullet. You know, I've seen it in sales my whole career where they're like, Oh, if we could just get this right salesperson, uh, everything will change. And then they just go through salespeople like toilet paper and they can't figure out why. And sometimes it's not, you know, there's not a silver bullet. It's just hard work and getting along no. and the chemistry, you know? You know, they're really, they're really, I found there really is. I mean, I have a few people that, that work with me now who were guides before, but it's the minority, not the majority of people. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I happen to have known them for a number of years prior to them coming with me. Um, but for the most part, what I've always found is like, if you weren't doing it somewhere else, what makes you think you're doing it with me? Right. You know, if, you weren't, if you weren't happy doing the, what you're doing someplace else, um, unless there was something like really odd there, you know, why you'd be happy here? You know, you'd probably be the least happy here, you know, right. So I don't, you know, we're not as structured maybe as other places, you know, a little, a little more, maybe, I don't know, democratic, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Now, Joe, this year, or I should say last year, 2020, I mean, you you recently purchased, a was it a fly, a fly shop right before? Yeah, fly you, shop. When, yeah. when, did, when did you purchase the fly shop? 
So it's it's kind of a um, I, I so a friend of mine uh, um, actually built this fly shop close to almost thirty years ago. Maybe it's thirty years now. Wow. But anyway, he built his fly shop. Unfortunately, he passed away in his fifties very suddenly, and the place ended up disappearing. And I, I used to work my business out of his fly shop, and then. Um, it turned into a deli, a garden center, a nursery or something like that. And then someone bought it and turned it into a house. And then another friend of mine bought it and he wanted to turn it back into a fly shop. And he's about 10 years, 12 years younger than me. And he bought this and he had another bigger general store, sport shop in, in another, another area. So he had experience at it and he had another real job on top of it. Right. So anyway, he, he gets this fly shop. I move in with him. Uh, it's a, a great, you know, kind of a going steady together. And so I'm running the outfitting business there. He's got his retail store going. Everything's great. That's how I wanted to keep it. Then he gets this giant promotion at his real job. And all of a sudden, this became a big thorn in his side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, I can't keep it. There's no way. <laughs> Three hours away from home. There's no way I can keep the shop going. I got to sell it. Mm-hmm. But, but he, you know, it's great. We had a great relationship. He didn't want to just sell it to anyone that sure. I wouldn't be able to work with and stay there. So anyway, he finds a guy interested in buying it. Um, everything's going along. And all of a sudden, at the last minute, the whole deal falls through. I mean, basically, I couldn't get financing. I guess is what happened. The whole deal falls through. He's just going to close the place because he can't. There's no way he can do it. You know, he'll, he'll kill himself trying to keep it going. Yeah. So he's just going to close it. And I'm like, uh, maybe I'll buy it. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, I knew what he was selling it for to the other guy, you know, and I was like, hey, make this, you know, same deal we're in. And so that's what we did. I ended up buying it. Um, and then COVID shows up, you know. So it's like, wow, the timing couldn't have been worse. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah. No, but, but it worked, you know, it worked out. It wasn't, you know, like it, it's, nothing's easy, but you know, you, you don't give up, you don't throw the towel. In. Yeah. You know, there's, there's always some, something in life happens, you know, if it wasn't COVID, it could have been a flood that year, it could have been locusts, you know, it could have been whatever, yeah. you know, there's always something happens. The stock market could have crashed, or whatever. but, um, you know, so you just push on, you move on, you do the best you can. And, you know, it's working, you know, found it, awesome guy to, to run the shop for me. You know, I don't really get involved in the, I get involved in the day to day of it. I don't get involved in the, the ordering really. And that sort of stuff, you know, I mean, I kind of put the stamp on it at the end because I do sign the checks, but I don't, um, I don't get involved in like the, the nitty gritty of it. You know, I like the fun part of it. I don't like, you know, I don't think I've ever, you know, gotten involved in it the fine details of retail. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, now, now, do you, um, do you guys sell stuff online or is it mainly just on person? Yeah. So what happened, we, we, there was no online thing set up or anything, right? So COVID hit state of Pen- we're in Pennsylvania, state of Pennsylvania won't even let us sell curbside. We can't even like take orders and leave it on the front porch. Wow. Right? So it's like, we got to get some online thing up in a hurry. So we did. So it was kind of hokey. Um, but it, generated some income and, you know, we still got it going. It's, it's, it's uh, right. It's a work in progress. So, uh, we got, I got a few things in the technology side that are going on right now, as far as redoing websites, redoing shopping, online shopping and stuff like that. So in, uh, in about a month at the most, it should be all done probably more like two weeks, but I'll be happy, you know, it's supposed to be two weeks. I'll be, I'll be, I'm fine if it's a month. <laughs> you know, that stuff goes. It's never. You know? yep. So it'll be, it'll be good. So that's great. But I'm not really looking at the online. I mean, I like fly shops, right? I don't like online shopping. I don't sell them so very seldom. Though I buy something online, and that would only be if I, I had to drive more than like two hours to go get it myself. Um, I'm just like. I don't know. I, I like personal service. I like seeing stuff. I like going into whether it's a hardware store or a fly shop or a, you know, a gun shop, hunting shop, 
you know, whatever. I, I like going in those places. And, um, and I, and I think most people actually do too. They enjoy the experience, you know, not just wanting to go online all the time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, what, if you don't mind sharing, what, what is the web address where people could find your shop if they're in the area or if they want to? Sure. It's, it's whitetailflyshop.com. Okay. And we'll put the, um, the link there in the show notes so people can check that out. Now I, I've talked to fly shop owners before on the podcast and there's been some very successful shop owners, um, that have come on here and they all say, kind of say the same thing. It, there's something about the community that you build in a local fly shop that you're just not going to get, um, on YouTube. You know, I talked to, um, Gary Lindquist, who is, who, who runs the fly fishers international or fly, um, Yes, Fly Fishers International here in um, in Grand Rapids, and he was saying, you know, a lot of younger people aren't coming out to the clubs because they're on YouTube learning to tie and all that. But there's something mm-hmm. about that community. There's something about that structure that that is beautiful. And sometimes I romanticize it, but um, it's a beautiful thing. You know, we have a fly shop here that's locally owned. That's, that's, that's pretty good. And then we have an Orvis shop here as well. Then the Orvis guys take very good care of, uh, very good care of me. Nick, his name's Nick Garlock and he's, it's an Orvis shop, but mm-hmm. it does feel like a, a local fly shop. You know, mm-hmm. the guys know your name. They, they take care of you. Um, sure. They have some, some dog biscuits and some, some collars and some old, sure. man, you know, old man shirts or whatever, but it's still yeah. a great shop. You know, it's a mm-hmm. great place to go and just kind of hang out. Do you, do you think that the pen, I mean, you know, I, I want to say the pendulum will swing, will swing, but I think as people will get old, like right now, I probably order more things online than I should because I have two kids and they're small and getting them out in the snow is a pain in the butt. And I say, I need to grab something. And by the time I get over to the shop or get over to wherever, it's a week or two out, you know, but as I get older and my kids are getting older, I'm more likely to stop by the shop, you know, and, and do that kind of thing. But do you... Are you seeing a younger demographic come into the shop, into those community built? I know it's kind of hard with COVID. Well, I mean, that's been kind of weird, we, but we, we, we do because we're a destination sh- fly shop too. Okay. You know, it's not like we're not in any town or metropolitan area. You know, we're just like in the middle of nowhere on the West branch of the Delaware. Right. Uh-huh. So, um, and, and you know, we do get business year round. We stay open year round. Um, but no winter, the hour, you know, we're only open four days a week, not seven. Okay. Um, but the, um, Younger guys and gals are coming in. Uh, I noticed it last year. There, a lot of them really recognize coming into a fly shop. A lot of people are just starting to tie flies. Like, so the guy who manages the shop for me is like Patrick Cook. Pat, Pat's awesome guy and great tire, awesome fly tire, and willing to teach people. Loves to show people, and you know he'll show someone who is just starting off tying flies and bought all this stuff already online, their vice, whatever. And they have a question. Um, and you know, they say, well, I watch eight view, you know, YouTube videos and, and he'll show them in five minutes, you know, right. Right. because certain things, I mean, you, there's nothing like in person to learn it. I mean, you, you can't, you know, uh, like if you never cast a fly rod, pick up, I don't care who wrote the book, pick up a book on how to cast you ain't gonna do nothing, right? Right. right. You know, like you know, you'd probably be worse off than if you know before. Now, if you already have cast it and stuff, and you understand the dynamics and the, and the physics behind everything, and you read a book, it could help you. Mm-hmm. But if you never did it before, you're brand new, and you think you learn how to cast from reading a book, it's not gonna happen. Videos, maybe some videos, um, still nothing like one on one, right there teaching it, you know, like you teach someone how to double haul in 10 minutes mm-hmm. uh, or less. Uh, no one learns how to do it watching a video or reading a book in 10 minutes. You know, it's, right. it's, it's, it just doesn't, it just doesn't lend itself to that. You know, it almost, you know, it's like anything though. It'd be like learning how to play golf just by reading the book. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't, it's, it doesn't work that way. So that, that I think, you know, like you said, the pendulum, yeah, maybe it's going to swing back. I think there was a time and I've been in these shops and maybe you have to, um, there were a lot of fly shops over the years, like any boutique or specialty business where the people in the business 
were in it for the wrong reason. Mm-hmm. You know, they were in it to escape from something. They weren't in it to serve the public. You know, they just wanted to hide in the back. They, they weren't interested in someone who was new. They didn't want to spend the time, you know. So they kind of pushed those out of there. They just wanted their buds, their regulars, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's ha- that happens with guides, too. You see the same thing um, where, you know, people aren't, um, they're not embracing that part of our industry, you know. And, and like in anything, there are more people who never did something than that have done something, you know? So whatever it is, you know, those, those people are going to want to try it out. And we did see this huge influx, you know, because of COVID. Right. People want to go outside. Um, and it's partly that and partly people couldn't travel anywhere. Or, so they were just staying quasi local, you know, short drives, day drives, one night stay drives, stuff like that. So did see a lot of that, um, you know, happen, you know, because where we are, you know, we're two and a half hours from New York city. A lot of people, you know, were escaping that. And, you know, if you had an Airbnb, you really raked it in last year and they would, you know, people are working from home. So all you need is an internet connection and they were good, you know, so here you were, yep. you know, spending time in the country, working from home, but now the kids wanted to do stuff. And the kids couldn't play games on the internet because even though they had an internet connection, it's not like, you know, super speed, you know, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's dial up or a little bit better than dial up actually, but that's about it. You know, so they couldn't have their kids slow down their internets. And so now what the kids would do, let's take them fishing, you know? Which, yep. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that was that was a big. Uh, I think there's an article. I think my friend Aaron sent over to me that was talking about the the influx of people and, and the revenue. And I think Kurt Dieter over at T U may have wrote a piece. Oh yeah, Kurt, Kurt nailed it. Yeah, Kurt nailed it in that one article he wrote. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was, it was like, and I, you know, I hope it stays. You know, I hope that we do see. That's like, but yeah, that was a great article that he wrote on that. We'll put a link to that there in the show notes. But, um, but yeah, it was kind of weird because, you know, I have a, a little Creek that I go to that's, that goes off the grand, you know, it's in the, it's, um, off the grand river here in Grand Rapids. And, you know, it's kind of a locals only place and, and a lot of people don't know about it. And, you know, we're all stuck inside. I'm like, screw it. I'm going to go fishing. And I go out there and there's like three or four people like bouncing around in my <laughs> creek, you know? And I say creek, I mean creek. It, it, yeah, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hook a steelhead or, you know, some nice trout out of there because, you know, it, it's part of that, that whole, the whole Grand River thing. But, um, but it's kind of like my place. And, and so I asked the guy, I was like, hey, what, well, you know, hey, I, you know, I was really nice. I'm not going to be a jerk about it because, you know, again, it's his river too. So I was like, him and you know his posse was there and i said what are you what are you doing you know how did you find this place acted really ignorant you know he's like oh i was i was uh studying the grand river he's from the east side of the state from from detroit he's a dentist from detroit real nice guy and he's like yeah i just saw this was connected i thought there might be some fish in it and i was like nah there's no i've been fishing this a long time there's not a lot of fish in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's my little gym you know but i think we all saw we all saw that influx of you know people could fish monday through monday it wasn't just like mm-hmm. only on the weekends oh yeah no i, I was uh last april and, and may i couldn't i wasn't guiding couldn't be you know working so I was I was doing a lot of blue line fishing, you know, right right close to my house, like places I could walk to. And a few of them I would have to drive like three miles or so. But um, you never saw anybody up these roads ever, 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 ever. All of a sudden, there people. I was I was like parking a half a mile away from where I wanted to walk in, so people would think, oh, this must be a spot, you know, and. <laughs> The odd thing was twice I'd park in an air, you know, half a mile away from where I was going to cut in through the woods to get to this little stream I knew. And I'd come back and there'd be a car parked right behind me off the side of these, you know, little forest service road. And I'm thinking, this guy must just be wandering around the woods wondering, like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. But, but it was kind of cool because I got to do some fishing last spring that I hadn't done in years. And that was, you know, wild brook trout where a 10 inch fish was like a huge trophy and got me all excited. And it was, it was great. You know, it was great. I hadn't done that in, in years, just take a little three weight, you know, out and poking around and just, just having a great time doing it. So, um, 
you know, it was, I, I was good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm totally good social distancing. I mean, it's kind of like, <laughs> I'm totally fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Now, um, yeah, I got a three weight this year as well. Um, one of Barclays fiberglass three weight rods. And the problem with it is I never want to put it down. I just, mm-hmm. I just want to fish with it nonstop. You know, I, mm-hmm. I just, yeah, same thing with some brookies and some, some, even some smaller smallmouth bass and rock bass on it just felt like absolute giant. It's all good. Yeah. Absolutely. It's all good. Yeah. Right. Um, Bill, you had, a. um, a new rod, right? Was yeah, I got that weight? Redding uh, three weight last night. Reddington, like two years. Yeah, Reddington, two years ago, and yeah. yeah, same thing. I didn't want to put it down. That's my favorite rod. <laughs> I hooked that big brown trout on it, though. Yep. Like as soon as I tried it, I was like, "Holy cow!" <laughs> <laughs> it feels so much bigger than it is. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just a lot of fun, you know. Just something to do and. Uh, just kind of a new way of fishing for me, but, it, and I've never really fished glass before. So for me, it was slowed me down quite a bit and was just an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's good. I mean, my, well, my first rods were glass and then the, the little three weight, I have those, I guess would probably bought it in the early, early mid eighties, you know, real early on graphite rod. So it is pretty slow. Um, but it, you know, it's, uh, um, nothing fancy, you know, mm-hmm. it's not a fancy rod. I mean, I'd probably get $15 at a garage sale for it, you know, <laughs> but, but it's my little small stream poke around. And if it breaks, cause I fell off of something and broke it, it's not the end of the world. I hear you. Now, are you, are you still guiding yourself then? I mean, are you going yeah, out and I taking still, people? So guide myself, um, for sure. Last year, um, I probably, I guided more days than I had planned that's only because of the COVID situation. One of my guides, uh, he's actually lives in Michigan. He comes out for the season and last year he didn't. So I was short one guide. So I had to fill in there and, um, not just me, but the other guys too. So I ended up guiding a lot more than I planned on last year. And I bought the fly shop. I was figuring I'm just going to guide five days a week. And I was guiding virtually seven days a week. Mm-hmm. And this year I'm not this year. I'm sticking to the five days a week and, that's it. But, but I, I like it. It's, it's like, I, I, I'm not going to stop guiding mm-hmm. until physically I can't, you know, that's, that's when I'm going to stop. Yeah. There's no place I'd rather be than on the water when other people watching them catch fish pressures off me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny that, that you brought up the word passion because, you know, I've had some really amazing, um, fly fishing guides on the show and, and being a guide, I have no desire to do that. I would burn out very quickly. It's the hardest, one of the hardest jobs I think in the industry and without passion, without love for that, I think, I don't think you're going to last. It's, it's, no, it's you, hard you have to, you have to really, it's not fishing. I mean, it's fishing serendipitously, you know, through somebody else, but you, you actually, you have to like guiding. Mm-hmm. You know, someone, man, they, they can be the greatest angler, love to fish, want to fish, want to fish, want to fish. They hate guiding because they're not doing the fishing, you know. So everybody has to get over their, their mound of fish in their life before you can start guiding. You know, you have to get to that point where you don't, you just have to be there. You don't need to catch a fish. Right. You just got to be in the game. And, and, and that's, you get to that point then guiding is, is, to me, it's like next level in a lot of ways because it's, it's a lot harder to help someone else be successful if you just go do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 99% of the time, you know, you're, you're going to be a better angler than the person you're guiding. I mean, I have some great rods that fish with me. Um, just like, I'm not going to say hundred percent of the time, but I do have some really, really great rods that fish with me. But even then, um, they don't always know where to go, where to be, when to be there, you know, that sort of stuff. So when, when it all comes together, um, it's, it's really pretty cool, but you have to like that part of it. Right. You like the part of it. You, you gonna hate guiding. I mean, you gonna really hate guiding. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah. The people that guide like you, you say, I'm going to guide till I can't guide anymore. You know, that's, that's the same sentiment I get from the successful guides, the people that, that I talk to, um, they love it. They love doing that. You know, Dave, I, Dave McCoy over on the, you know, over in, I think in Portland area, I'm talking to him, you know, several guides I know down in Texas that are very successful guides and it's, 
Mm-hmm. They love it, man. That's what they live for. No, that's it, that's absolutely true. I mean, I do have clients ask me every year as I'm getting older, you know, and, and like, you know, when are you going to retire? And I'm like, I, I retired 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I have nothing to retire from now. So what I'm going to retire and go fishing every day. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think last time we, we talked, you said you didn't want to wake up to an alarm clock. Um, yeah, I still don't. Never yeah. set alarms. I mean, I can't say never. Maybe once or twice a year, going on an offshore trip or something. I got to leave my house at two in the morning. Yeah, I'll set an alarm yeah. clock. Other than that, you know, that I don't <laughs> just <laughs> you just wake up naturally, and ready to you know, and excited about it. You know. Yeah. Well, Joe, thank you very much for hanging out with me. Um, I will put your put your link down below. But for a lot of people, they're not looking at the show notes. So again, what was your website and where can people it's find it? White, whitetailflyshop.com. Okay, white, whitetail white, fly shop. Whitetail, like whitetail deer. Like right. Deer. Whitetailflyshop.com. Great. We'll put the okay. we'll put the show notes, put that in the show notes so people can check that out. They can also book some trips with you guys. Um, King of the Upper Delaware, uh, Mr. Jody Maldair. Yeah, they, they can find us on flyfishdelaware.com too. Flyfish the Delaware. Yeah, that's yeah, the one you had before, I think. Um, yeah, still have that. Yeah. Insane. We'll put that up as well too. And, and uh, people can book a trip with you guys um, or just shoot you a note or buy something there online to help support local fly shops. Uh, this year we're really, we're really pushing for that, supporting our local fly shop just because of the nature of 2020, the people that were, were hit really hard, some of the local shops. So we really appreciate you doing that and being there and being there for the community and building that up, Joe. And and that really is how the next generation of flying anglers is going to, is going to come along. It's not necessarily going to be on, on YouTube. Uh, it can be, but, um, well, but it's not, gonna, it's not going to be the same. We appreciate your support. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks a lot, Joe. Have a great night. You too. Take care. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on the Remote No Pressure podcast. Bill, that was a fun episode. It was pretty good. You know, Bill had one talking scene. I did. I was there. I was, uh, yeah. And you can see it, right? Yeah. I don't know. We didn't scrub that part of the video. I I think we can. Maybe not. See, we got all this like equipment now. And I say all this equipment, we downloaded some apps on the phone. Yeah. yeah. uh, Which I was trying to figure everything out. We're going to get it though. We're getting it, you know? We're getting it, Bill. Hey, listen, I know um, I, this is not a commercial or anything like that, but go to remotenopressure.com. Check out our gear. Check out our our merch, our swag, whatever the kids are calling them these days. Uh, but we have T-shirts. We have mugs. Did you hear the mug? Your beer is colder. Your coffee's hotter. Mm. All of our products. Perfectly ha- temperatured water right there. Room temp. It'll take it. To, if it's too cold, it'll take it to room. If it's too oh. hot, it'll take it to room temp. That's magical. Wait, 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 wait. So if we go to remotenopressure.com mm-hmm. and buy the mug, mm-hmm. and I put some hot coffee in this thing, yep, it's going to take it to room temp? It will take it to room temp. <laughs> this is like science. It's science. Don't, you can't argue with it. It's science. And if it's too hot, it'll bring it down to room temp. Man. If you let it just sit there, <laughs> it'll bring it down. <laughs> Got to let it do its work. <laughs> it's a good dad joke. <laughs> Not too fast, son. Let it do its work. But look, here's the deal. Here's the deal. See me looking at the camera. Look, here's the deal. Every one of our products, every one of our products, we have a 100% Sasquatch free guarantee. Say what now? That's what I said. I know it's hard to believe. And I know y'all are probably thinking like, did they bring in a shaman to like bless these things? Did we? To... I don't. I, I want to say yes so people will be impressed, <laughs> but I don't like to lie either. So let's pretend we brought in a shaman to do some kind of blessing on our products. Let's call him a guru. Let's just say. I like that. I like that. I, it's, so what is this guarantee? The shaman blesses it so... So you will not be attacked by a Sasquatch. 100% guarantee that mm. if you if you own one of our coffee cups, you take it camping, you're not going to get attacked. You get one of our buffs, our face our face gaiters, you're not going to get attacked by a Sasquatch. You wear one of any of our shirts. You pick. And I will 100% guarantee that you will not be attacked that's, by a Sasquatch. You can't afford not to do that. Who I else? Mean, who, that's my like an qu- insurance plan. My question is, who else out there is offering a... Uh, a, see, I was going to say it with like a lot of authority, and then I got screwed up on my words. <laughs> 
<laughs> who else out there is offering that kind of guarantee? <laughs> Nobody. I don't know of any other fly fishing podcasts out there that are offering this kind of protection. You can't, I mean, why would you buy from anywhere else? You know what? You may want to just go ahead and buy more than one shirt. You're going to have a daily. I mean, wear it under your clothes. Yeah. Just, just to be safe. You can't even search Amazon for the same guarantee. Hell no. This doesn't exist. Nope. (laughs) Hell no. (laughs) Hell no. I'm proud of that. We worked hard for that. (laughs) No one's freaking listening. No, no. Nah. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us this week on the Remote No Pressure podcast. Bill, did you have any final thoughts? Oh, man. You always ask, and I I just hit the music then. I I know that's been my excuse the last few times, too. We're going to get get this equipment figured out. That's what it was. User (laughs) air. Well, thank you guys. Until next time, go fishing.